this one we we aren't able to present tomorrow so we are showcasing it now this is a welcome note to dr dana radler madam and her team who has wonderfully collaborated with us and helped us sincerely to uh, to conduct this conference in a much deliberate manner so we'd like to welcome once again though it's too late we know but still Goodness unlimited, a place of beauty uncharted, joy unbounded, blessings freely granted, fun and fulfillment, living in the moment. You and all meet each other, caring for one another. Hey, look around, hear the sound playing for you. to India, the trip you always wanted, hey! Jesus, Krishna, Durga, and Allah, Buddha, Ura, Mazda, divinity, the soul of the spirit, a land where all the worship, find your freedom in this wisdom, mind and body get started. Fear and anger about it, hey, look around, hear the sound playing for you. Welcome to India, welcome to India, welcome to India, that's where it all started. Welcome to India, the trip you always wanted. Welcome to India, the trip you always wanted. Well, that was wonderful, Lakashif. Uh, though it would have been more appropriate, uh, though, of course, yes. So it's all for our, uh, you know, uh, partners uh, abroad who would be soon joining us for the G20 summit. So so this is something very nice. So are we having, uh, so please play the, uh, you know, video of uh, Professor Napisa. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Good morning, everyone and greetings from the wonderful city of London. I begin by saying good morning because the time right now is 6.30 a.m. Um, and it is, a, it is an absolute honor to be here uh, in India, even though virtually. So I'd like to begin by thanking uh, Professor Swayam Prabha and all of the members of the organizing committee for the humanities and social science conference in 2023, including my very good friend, Dr. John Baker. It is an absolute honor to be able to deliver this keynote um, here in the presence of this uh, vibrant and very inspiring academic circle. Um, of course, I would love to be there physically in India, um, um, and I hope I am able to welcome that opportunity in the near future. Um, however, once again, it is an absolute honor to be able to present here um, in this uh, very uh, inspiring academic community. So thank you for the opportunity. So today I'm going to be speaking specifically about um, a, an important person and his work, which very much shapes um, my work, my research. 
and um, my plans and uh, ambitions for what I hope to achieve um, in education and um, my little contribution <laughs> that I would like to hopefully make uh, to, to humanity and human development. And um, that is all based on the work of um, Indian economist and Nobel Prize winner Amartya Sen. So let me begin by sharing um, my screen so you can follow along. So yes, um, Amartya Sen is um, the founder or the person who developed the capabilities approach. And of course, he is a Nobel Prize winner. His work um, is one which um, has reshaped the way that we assess human well-being. And um, it is one which I very much consider a universal tool, because even though I am a British woman, I live and work in the UK. I am also um, a Nigerian and I uh, Nigerian education um, is very much uh, a part of, of an important part of my work as an educationalist. Um, and the interesting thing or one of the most interesting that things about this capability approach is that it has been widely implemented in areas such as economics, finance, healthcare, and of course, education in India. And because India shares a lot of social economic um, issues as Nigeria, um, I definitely can see this approach really reshaping um, a lot of areas uh, in Nigeria that need uh, reform, uh, particularly education, but other areas such as healthcare. Um, and that is all because of the evidence base that has been built by the implementation of this approach in India. But that is not to say that this is only for countries in Africa or Asia. And like I said, this specifically um, is an approach that rethinks the way we assess poverty and we assess well being. And um, my work here that I have done um, in the UK, which focuses on the area of adult education in particular ESOL so that is English for speakers of other languages this is a tool and a lens that I have used um, and I say tool and lens because it is the lens that I have used to look at my own study but also I believe it is a tool for much needed reform um, and the study that I have focused this on um, essentially, my doctoral thesis has actually, you know, from the findings, um, come up with tools for reforming um, the way we assess well-being um, and the way it transcends just monetary um, abilities. So, um, this, as I mentioned, is a theoretical framework which underpins my study. Um, and one of the reasons why I particularly favour this approach is the its comprehensiveness. Um, so I would like to um, highlight, um, of course, that this is um, the lens that I used for my doctoral thesis, a smart and capability approach to assessing adult ESOL learners. Um, and this specifically looks at um, what we call performance based measurement in assessment so of course um the way learners are assessed and you know adult learners are unique in the way that they are taught and the way that they learn um and the way that um the government particularly strategize um the policy for education and learning is one where i have been able to utilize a capability approach as a lens to really see um the way that it enables learners to be emancipated in terms of um, their own well-being and economic status within society so um one of the things that i mentioned um, about this approach that i particularly favor is its comprehensiveness um and the fact that you know um it really looks at well-being and human development beyond 
just economic capacity. So here's a quote that I particularly like because of its simplicity, but also the way it captures the entire essence of the approach. So poverty is not just a lack of money. It's not having the capability to realize one's full potential as a human being. Now, of course, if we just take a moment to, to, to let that sink in, we can actually begin to see how that can really, really education can be utilized to drive this notion. And essentially, um, when I, if I revert back to my own study of smart target setting in community adult learning in ESOL, and ESOL that is English for speakers of other languages, the adult education sector in the UK benefits greatly from um, the fact that uh, it is preparing adults for um, expanding the economy and society um, to drive UK forward um, as a world economic leader. But that is where we have to actually look closer and see, in this case, how does it then enable learners to become actually active agents of change in society and actually take control of their well-being and of course their well-being um, incorporates things as their learning the way they're able to function in society as um you know uh um members you know parents and um uh workers and uh you know members of society that actually you know work together to 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 drive the uk forward but essentially do that not to the detriment of their own well-being so um as i mentioned the esol sector is supposed to in theory prepare adults for success in literacy and language so where there have been gaps in adults um gaining these skills um specifically if they are adult migrants um the actual ESOL provision is supposed to drive them forward um, in this respect. Um, so using the capabilities approach as a lens to do this really actually allowed me to evaluate the effectiveness of this type of assessment. And by this, I mean smart target setting. And the significance of this study is that I was specifically focusing on ESOL learners at entry level. So entry level is the lowest actual um, qualification that is available in the UK, according to the National Qualifications Framework. And learners at this level are predominantly migrants, refugees, asylum seekers. And of course, these people are economically more vulnerable um, and they are a marginalized section of com um, the community. And there is an absolute need for this type of English learning, so ESOL, um, for civic life and employability. Um, and this, you know, transcends into other areas where um, these specific profile of learner um, have the spotlight on them. So, for example, there is um, a lot of debate and a lot of that debate is hostile in terms of um, integration into society. You know, they are, they are immigrants who've come um, and um, whether the, the their responsibility of integration lies on them and whether they're refusing to integrate and, of course, employability because if the government are going to fund these um esol provision and um, then they expect a return on their investment and that is where we look at the actual economic value but of course as amartya sen puts it um well-being is not necessarily measured by one's economic status um it is um something that he breaks down um much more comprehensively so um as i mentioned as this is a theoretical framework underpinning my study and not just this particular study um a lot of my work um the capabilities approach focuses more on freedom to achieve well-being of primary moral importance rather than how much money somebody has how much they're able to um, earn or how much they're able to uh, 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 you know um accumulate um, secondly, well-being should be understood in terms of functions and capabilities, and this is where really we see how this approach is universal, because um, even if you are rich um, in terms of economic status, you could actually be poor 
if we apply um you know what you have reason to value as a human so if you have you know a million pounds in your bank account but you are unable to uh leave your home because perhaps you know you have a disability that prevents you to do so then the fact that you have a million pounds um doesn't really make you uh doesn't add to your well-being unless that money can be utilized to give you the freedom to be able to leave your house. And that is essentially how we look at well-being using this approach. It is the person's ability to be able to do the things that they have reason to value <laughs> rather than the amount of money that they have um, available or access to. So the focus here is on the actual capability of the individual to achieve their desired well-being rather than whether they do or they don't. So the key issue here is justice in terms of any individual's ability to fulfill their potential in whatever social context they live in, which is why I say this is a universal concept. Um, it is one that we can apply to, you know, less economically developed countries in, for example, Africa and in Asia and also um, countries that are perceived to be more economically and technologically advanced, such as the UK. So from my study, um, the findings of what are examples of capabilities development, for example, um, in relation to um, the subjects of my study, so these are adult learners of ESOL, is being able to do things that they have reason to value. For example, make an appointment over the phone to see a doctor. If you don't have the language to be able to do that, then it really doesn't matter how financially comfortable you are because you actually can't do something that is very important for your well-being. Another example is being able to help your children with homework, making a shopping list being able to give directions when asked by strangers in the street. Now, this is particularly um, one that I really found eye opening because this came from the actual data um, that I generated from interviews with these subjects. And um, I recall one specific learner talking about how frustrated she felt. Um, she almost felt a sense of shame where people would stop her in the street thinking she, you know, she was a resident in the um, you know, vicinity of the area. And she wasn't able to give the directions, even though she knew that the coach station she was being asked was just around the corner, but she just didn't have the language to be able to say, yes, go straight, turn left. And that in itself is, you know, had a limitation on her well-being because it was very frustrating. It made her feel less than, but being able to learn the language to be able to just function and to be able to, you know, give direction when asked was such a fulfilling thing for her and a rewarding thing. And that's something that we can, you know, really, um, attest to being a capability that um, that elevates uh, human well when well-being. OK, so um, the summary and recommendations based on using the capabilities approach as a tool um, and also as a lens is that, you know, um, the assessment surrounding smart target driven individual learning plans. So that's what ILP we refer to as individual learning plans. Um, and developing a better framework should include more student focus by having contextualization on the sp scope of what they want to achieve. So this is not just funding money and making sure that students, you know, achieve a certain amount in um, a certain level in their assessment, but actually really contextualizing what is it they want to achieve. And like I said, here are um, some examples of capabilities development that is very valued to these learners. Secondly, there needs to be more targets. There needs to be more focus on targets of wider social skills, which equip learners with as foundations for higher academic study in English language learning, ESOL and literacy or employment, but also ensures ongoing well-being and empowering learners with what they have reason to value. 
So um, I hope that that um, has given you food for thought. And um, if you haven't explored the work of Amar Chasen, um, hopefully um, you will be able to uh, do that. And of course, um, I am very open to questions and discussions surrounding this topic. So please um, do not hesitate to get in touch with me. Um, my details um, are available. Um, you can email me and um, we can talk about the issues that you found interesting or you um want to want to discuss or challenge further so thank you very much for listening good evening everyone ma'am uh, director sir and ceo dhobi ji have already joined Okay, that's great. So let's get on to the valedictory section and uh, we'll just uh, briefly wind up because all of us uh, have already uh, been uh, into this, right? Uh, so yes, so Akasha, over to you. Proceed with the session. Good evening, everyone. Respected chairperson, Dr. Swam Prabhat Satpati. Respected co-chair, Tana Radler, madam. Respected Director, SRF Institute of Science and Technology, Ramapuram Campus, CEO, uh, media partners, participants, colleagues, friends, and media. Thank you for your active participation in this two days conference. I have overlain by the participation that you have all contributed to the ecosystem. My personal and sincere thanks to Dr. Dana Radler, Madam, Alice Trauma, Madam, and her sincere team. He, they were much taller than everyone else in that group, and he was much grounded and asked many questions regarding the conference and how it was being taken over. It's how, on a very comfortable evening, we have me and Dr. Swam Prabhupada Madam was discussing about how to take it forward, how to make this conference. Of, in that moment, Dr. Rad, Tana Radler Madam joined us. We, all of us, collaborated and we have pitched our idea. Dr. Vizuya Bharati, sir, who instantly agreed to support us, mentor us in whatever possible way it can be. She's a well known today. When I'm taking over to this, I'm also very feeling proud to share that one of my college alumni and my senior, Dr. Ravi Ranjan, who, who, uh, CEO Dhobiji, he has also joined us yesterday. The Swamprava Foundation, under the chairmanship of Dr. Swamprava Satpati, has conferred C.K. Satpati Young Entrepreneurship Award to Dhobiji. So I congratulate Team Dhobiji on behalf of the entire team. And I also request Swamprava Madam to give the remarks to Dr. Dhisubhav Bharati Sir, Dana Radler, Ma Alice Thoma Madam, Ravi, uh, Ravi Ranjan, as well as to all other dignitaries who have joined us. Absolutely. Thank you, Akashak. I will fail in my duties if I don't extend my heartfelt thanks for uh, to Dana, uh, to John, and uh, to all the collaborators who have, uh, you know, been with us. And uh, for, that is from University of Bucharest, for uh, for T. L. D. Litre, Bhattar College, Dantan. Uh, that is uh, um, for Tarun and Institutional uh, Linstel, Romania, Department of Modern Languages and Business Communication Bucharest, and uh, our media partners as Pioneer and Odessa today. So I'm greatly obliged and thankful to each and every one of uh, uh, who have been uh, there throughout the two days and have helped uh, us in making this conference a success. So I never expected, you know, because my objectives are very stative and I always feel that, uh, you know, some every foundation does certain work and, you know, certain sort of philanthropy, but I wanted that research should come up because people have been, uh, you know, uh, just uh, making this research as a part of a, a you know, getaway to uh, say some sort of, uh, you know, maybe some sort of vested interest as I can see these days. But I always want that education should always be rightly taken with the right perspective. And I'm really 
happy and thankful that I have right people on uh, board as uh, even uh, Professor uh, Subhya Bharti, who has been very kind enough and have been mentoring us, though he's a very soft-spoken person. And uh, so whenever we needed something and he was always there to help us. And of course, I congratulate uh, Ravi uh, for, at, uh, for being such a young entrepreneur. And uh, Ravi, this is for you. The basic thing what I wanted is, you know, my father always encouraged young people and he's no more with me. So I wanted that at least by his name, his blessing should be with you as well as, well as mine. Uh, so God bless you in all your future endeavors. So thank you all. Thank you so much for being a part. And over next, uh, as I said, we are having an agenda of G20 Summit. So we will be once again uh, coming together and uh, again uh, planning on things. So this is not a time to stop for us. This is just a beginning and we will move ahead. So thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Olaf. Namaste, namaste. Thank you, Elena, namaste. for being there all throughout the time with such a uh, vibrant smile. Thank you, John, for being uh, with all your, you know, difficult times and uh, your classes, etc. But you were all throughout with us. So actually, I always say that this is my extended family because I have a very small family. And uh, so the extended family helps me out in all my uh, work that I want to do. So thank you so much for being a part. We will be in touch again. And I really sincerely wish that next time we are not meeting online, but all of us are meeting offline in person. So that's what we are looking forward to. Have a wonderful day and evening. So thank, thank you. Namaste. The same to you. Thank you. I thank request you. Uh, Dana, madam, to share her note. Followed by that, we will uh, we will request John sir to share his brief note. and. Uh, followed by that, we will request Ravi, uh, Ravi Bhaiya, and after that, we will request Director Sir, Dr. V. Subhya Bharti, to put the closure remarks. Dana, Thank Madam. you very much. Thank you very much to everyone and uh, also to senior colleagues and those involved in organizing it. But I wish to thank to the, uh, perhaps I don't know who is the youngest presenter, uh, but uh, I am very pleased that we have even in, not only in terms of, of themes, of topics, but also in terms of experience. So those who are very young at the beginning of their career had yes. no fear and uh, took uh, the opportunity to present their ideas so that we can learn from each other because even those who are most experience can always find things that they can absorb. And this mutual exchange is absolutely continuous and across countries and so on. And where you could see that, you know, colleagues from uh, Britain, from Belarus, uh, from other regions joined us. So this can only enhance this experience. So I wish to thank you once again. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now I request John Sutt to put his remarks. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to join SOAM and all of you. Um, SOAM, or been together many times, the rest of you, for my, many of us, it's the first time, and uh, that's the growth of community. That's the beauty of these events. I enjoyed viewing each and every one of your uh, presentations. The diversity was exciting, invigorating, and very, very educational. I also want to congratulate uh, everyone for presenting today. You've made a great step in your career, and I'm looking forward to your future growth. And as Swam said, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you face-to-face -face in the near future. Thank you. I now request Ravi Ranjan to put his media marks. Thank you so much, uh, Karsak, and uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for recognizing me as an entrepreneur. And uh, um, it's a really nice platform right now that I'm getting a recognition here right now. And also, at the same time, my mentor is present in front of me. Our, the director, sir, Dr. Subhaya Bharti, sir, he is my mentor from first year. I still remember the date when I started the startup in my first year. He has been supporter, the big, biggest supporter I can say from the throughout the journey in 
college when I was in first year and I started my entrepreneurship career that I wanted to do something. From that time now, recording in progress. So this is really nice opportunity and nice place right now for me that where I'm getting, getting recognized in front of my mentor. So at least he is getting the value is that his mentorship has somewhere built something. So I'm really thankful to sir also, and I'm really thankful to Soyam and Akarsak. You are like you are junior in my college. You were junior in my college from day one when you like we met. From day, that day onwards, I've like it's been. I've seen you growing, and I've seen you going. And I, now here, you are part of this organization, uh, building something for the societies. And like research and development is the one key which I think is sort of always go ahead. And even we promote that because we tie up with the people who are not well educated. Like we are into the laundry business, especially laundry and dry cleaners. And those people are 10th and 12th pass and they are not getting a good opportunities in the societies and all. So the research and all, I, I was going through the last presentation where the economical condition was not the barrier. They were trying to present that. So I, it was really nice that this type of research should go ahead, which can bring prosperity in the society. So thank you so much, everyone, for inviting me here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bhaiya. It's always good in your presence. I now request Dr. V. Bharti sir to put his closure remark. Thank you, Agar sir. Good evening to all. Uh, it is a pleasure and honor to be among uh, eminent people in social sciences and humanity. Special thanks to Dr. Swayam Prabha for creating this opportunity. On this occasion, I would like to convey only one thing. I would like to draw an analogy from history. Uh, one of my favorite writers is Albert Camus. He's an Algerian footballer turned novelist. He's an existentialist writer. Uh, you know very well uh, it, about 100 years back, humanity had a very big crisis existentialist crisis during the World War. Post Second World War, humanity undergoes a severe crisis, searching for the meaning of the life because uh, it is the vulnerability of human existence itself. So that time, it was a big crisis. But we have crossed over. But 2020, we had a similar experience, even though the cities were not bombarded with bombs, but same crisis we have undergone. Again, it was a loss of hope and the entire humanity, its vulnerability towards an unknown, an invisible virus we have come across. But then again, we are able to come back with a lot of hopes now, this gives a deeper meaning into the life. People started to look at health, relationship, freedom, especially the meaning of home, family. Especially uh, India, even though we have no experience of a great war, but I know the people who are here assembled, especially from Europe, you have undergone the crisis very much. You know very well what are all the different kind of sufferings people undergone during the world war. We have no experience, but COVID, it was completely across the globe. Each and every nook and corner of the village, we have come across this crisis. Again, it is an existentialist crisis only. Uh, so many things have changed, especially the migration of people, migration of labor, the economic crisis. It is a philosophical question. Why I'm telling all these things is people who are here, you are stalwarts in philosophy, social science, economics. Now it is an opportunity for us to study this as a special thing, COVID, post COVID, how the world order changed. I expect a lot of writings on this. Yes. I, I, I have not witnessed another Albert Camus now. 
it should be because it was a crisis in similar scale i would say it is even big, a bigger scale compared to world war covid crisis were bigger than that so it should have produced more outcome in terms of writing philosophy literature in all facets of things so that's what we expect i hope the second conference of this foundation will take up this as a special session and will discuss further so before closing i will i would like to quote from uh, again one of the very famous philosopher jean paul sartre so quote man is condemned to man is condemned to be free because once thrown into the world he is responsible for everything he does with that unquote with that i close my remarks all the best thank you all thank you sir for this wonderful words and with your mentorship i'm sure the next sessions will be much elaborated and so much better than this thank you so much sir ma'am i request you to close the conference yeah i've already uh, almost we have come so thank you all for being here with me and so this journey as i said we are starting further for better projects and better collaborations and better uh, opportunities for research and development thank you all thank you so much thank you akarshak can be close thank you uh, thank you to akarshak <laughs> yes sir yes sir thank you ma'am so he is the man behind everything so without him i am actually <laughs> i won't be able to move so a uh, big thank you to akarshak <laughs> no issues ma'am no issues ma'am <laughs> we'll meet again thank, thank you. you yes yes we'll meet bye, soon thank you bye bye then bye enjoy bye, your bye. evening bye 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 shubh ratri bye john sir bye 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 dana ma'am Bye bye sir have a beautiful day all thank you sir